What up gunslingers? You already know it's Gary7MT for the GTA series videos crew and we're back on. In this vid, we're going through all the previews and more than 30 screenshots released online for the next most anticipated title from Rockstar Games, Red Dead Redemption 2. As said in our previous video, journalists from various countries were invited by Rockstar to a 45 minute gameplay preview. We learned that work on the game began in 2010, eight years ago, as production ended on its predecessor title and despite being that old, this is the very first title created by Rockstar Games for the latest generation of consoles. Excluding of course the re-release of GTA 5 on new gen which is technically a remaster. For the second time after Max Payne 3 in 2012, Rockstar Games has put all the branches to work on Red Dead Redemption 2 under the name of Rockstar Studios. The demo shown ran on a regular PS4 at 1080p, but they've said nothing about possible support for 4K on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Thanks to Sunny GTA Man on Twitter, we do know that the title appears between those classified as enhanced for PS4 Pro in the PlayStation Store. And the same can be said for the Microsoft counterpart. Maybe they're saving that announcement for the stages of the E3 in mid-June. Grand Theft Auto, Bully, Midnight Club, and Manhunt all began on PlayStation. Today, we'd like to announce a new property coming from Rockstar North. It's called Agent, and it will be exclusive to PlayStation 3. We'll see. The lucky ones invited had a chance to see, not play, portions of the world of the game, some new features and mechanics, and old characters involved in random activities and one brief mission. Journalists also had the opportunity to interview Rob Nelson, co-studio head of Rockstar North, to talk a little about the game and the studios. Rockstar's intention is to aim for more, to reinvent and innovate the genre and break through any existing boundaries, even if they were the ones who set them with their previous game. Before starting, let's take a moment to send big thanks to all the guys on the GTA forums involved in summarizing and translating the previews released. Red Dead Redemption 2's story is set in 1899 at the end of the golden age of the gunslingers and chronicles the adventures of Arthur Morgan, chief enforcer of the gang and Dutch's right hand man. He's under Dutch's wing from a young age and all these years of blind support and belief made him one of the few men Dutch trusts. Arthur himself is experiencing an existential crisis and this life-changing period contrasts with the perception that the time with Dutch's gang and way of life is near an end, despite Dutch's stubbornness and will to continue fighting. So how did you meet these William Song and Esquella? We ran in the same gang together, under a fella called Dutch. We were all bad kids, lost, angry and forgotten. He kind of saved us. And turned you into criminals? Dutch didn't see us that way. We robbed banks, stole from the rich, and we gave the money to the people who needed it more. So he was a revolutionary too, like me. I suppose. He saw that the system of power was rotten. The good people had been crushed for too long, and he believed that change could only succeed if it was brutal and relentless. Make America what he felt it was supposed to be. I like the sound of this man, Dutch. Another violent idealist. While Redemption was the story of a single outlaw in his past, Red Dead Redemption 2 is instead the story of a group of people, gunslingers, outlaws, renegades, and more, who are not keen on bowing to a future of stupid rules made by broken men with too much power. At the beginning, Morgan might be disagreeable, a rough man who believes that suffering is unnecessary and can be avoided. As the story unfolds, players understand that Arthur has a moral code and they get to understand him, his motives, and why he acts the way he does. The story of Red Dead Redemption 2 is all about loyalty and honor and centered on the figure of Arthur. Contrary to what we thought, there won't be multiple characters like we had in GTA 5. But while controlling Morgan, you're not only in control of him, but we also indirectly are in control of Dutch's entire crew. But we'll get to that later. 
Even those who are new to the series can play and enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2, despite this prequel's story being grounded in Red Dead Redemption. About this, Nelson said that there's a lot of connective tissue between the two stories and lots of characters that you've seen before that you'll see again. Thanks to all the previews, we know more about Arthur Morgan. As we said, he is one of the older members of the gang, possibly called Sons of Dutch. And this makes him second in command. According to the previews, Arthur always puts the gang first because it's the only family he has and the only people he trusts. He doesn't want to end the outlaw life at all, and he can be described as a hard man of muscle, driven by his own code. All action and no idle words. But what clearly drives the story together with the fall of the group is Arthur's existential crisis. Maybe, like his mentor, he's starting to understand that despite his actions, the war they're fighting has already been lost. Character customization is back, with the ability to change hats and clothes, even though sometimes certain clothes may be required for specific missions. And, as shown in official artwork, hair, beards, and mustaches can be changed. At one point, a journalist saw Arthur sporting a rather elegant mustache. Apparently, you can choose to cut just the hair or go with the beard, only the chin, etc. But to do so, you need to let some time pass by because hair grows slowly over time. This feature works according to Rockstar's main goal and design philosophy. Create the most realistic and believable world ever made. Everything has been changed or made from scratch to ensure that the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 runs on a schedule. Everything all around the player moves and follows specific and believable routines with a completely recreated AI that gives everyone a role, a goal, and a meaning to be where they are doing what they're doing, with or without the presence or interaction of the player. Everything has been built with an eye towards keeping things as realistic as possible without becoming dull and lengthy, from major features like the customization of the character to little details, like the fact that Morgan shakes his glass to dry it before putting it in his bag, or that an NPC puts his hand on his gun in suspicion when Morgan gets closer to him, or that if you lose your hat for any reason, you have to grab it or buy a new one because it won't just appear back on your head. Despite much of the HUD being switched off for the demo, some parts were seen and as always, the player can customize by choosing the details he wants to use. The minimap or radar is brought back to the classic circular form. And talking about returns, the dead eye is back and Morgan is clearly able to use this ability in a way more like in Red Dead Redemption. The aiming system seemed similar to GTA's, although the developer confirmed that there are new control mechanics, one of which is the ability to upgrade weapons, shoot a whole magazine in a few seconds, and most importantly, like in Max Payne 3, Morgan can bring with him a limited amount of weapons and select them via a weapon wheel. How many weapons is unknown. Also from Max Payne 3, and a lot more looks to be borrowed from that title and dropped into Red Dead Redemption 2, is the kill cam, which highlights kills in slow motion. The point of view is closer to the first Red Dead Redemption and the camera changes depending on the activity. It's unknown if this can be changed manually. The sounds of the world have vastly improved, and talking about sounds, the whistle can be used now not only to call back the horse, and we'll drop more on that later, but also attracts or distracts people and animals. Of course, the biggest feature of Red Dead Redemption 2 is what we always consider the real protagonist of every Rockstar title, the world itself. The map is the biggest ever created by Rockstar Games, filled with unique locations, snowy wastelands, mountain ranges in the north, infinite prairies and forests in the middle, and swamps in the south, all seamlessly blending into one another. The world is rich, and you can find shelter, homesteads, camps, villages, and cities. Everything has been handcrafted and hand-placed in the world, like a scorched forest created piece by piece. The entire world is an organic ecosystem, an environment so profound, nothing like it has ever been seen in a video game. 
The demo shown was set in an area called New Hanover, where people mainly live off livestock and which has a rich wildlife. Birds, deer, fireflies, bears, rabbits, frogs, ducks, bats, and more have been seen. And exactly like any NPC or animal in the game, the world itself is a living, breathing creature, bending to the will and whims of the developers. At one point, a group of people pulling up walls to build a ranch were spotted. Come back to this area after a while and you'll find this building completed and in operation. Red Dead Redemption 2's world is, in some ways, evolving, in which railways will be built and the town will expand. There still are some limitations. For example, you can casually burn down a structure and find it still destroyed later, but you cannot burn down an area of forest. It's not practical and it will change the vibe of the world itself. You'll be able to see a flock of sheep complete with dog and shepherd crossing a street, animals hunting other animals or attacking people, and vultures scavenging prey left in the open. You can find travelers on the road, from friendly faces to lawmen, rival gangs, and much more. Like we said, every NPC has a purpose, and your presence doesn't change their routine, unless you choose to do something to them. This is where Red Dead Redemption 2 departs from its predecessor. The honor system we had in Red Dead Redemption has been completely revisited, and now everything you do in the game affects the environment, the liaison with other characters and groups and more. Sheriffs talk to you randomly if they suspect you will cause trouble and ask you to be law-abiding. People may banish you from their property and farmers won't like Arthur traveling too close to their lands. If you killed someone in a city before, people will slowly put their hands near guns while talking to you, just in case. The world can be as hostile or as friendly as the player chooses to play because it's the player that chooses what to do and how to do it. Even meeting an NPC instead of simply greeting him or her like Marston did in the past. Don't stay out too late, when miss. John Bye there. But sing hallelujah to him and he will hear. Arthur has various options. Lock on the target with the left trigger and each button of the controller will offer a different contextual behavior such as greet, antagonize, rob, and every option will change according to how you act violent or not. Arthur will be able to choose how to deal with situations of caught, stealing or committing a crime, peacefully or forcefully, by talking, threatening or simply drawing the weapon. But every action and choice will create a reaction from people fleeing to others finding cover and firing. During the demo shown, only one mission was played by the developer, a bank robber in the small town of Valentine. A small settlement described as the quintessential Wild West, with a muddy main street and sheriff's office, a saloon, the general store, and a bank lining the street. The mission started in the gang's camp by interacting with a group of three friends. Rockstar's aim is to blur the line between main missions and secondary activities by treating both the same. In no moment was there a clear break in story and gameplay, and this seems like another thing brought in from Max Payne 3, where transitions between cutscenes and gameplay were seamless. After talking with the group, time moves forward, and we find Arthur, Lenny, Bill Williamson, and Karen in the morning on their horses as they reach Valentine. Once in town, Karen asks Arthur how to behave as a distraction in the bank. This is going to be just one of the tons of decisions the player has to make during the game. We try to give you options within a lot of these missions to choose how you approach it, whether you'll send your buddies in first or whether you'll go in first, said Rob Nelson. Red Dead Redemption 2 focuses heavily on player choice for the story and missions. At the moment, it's unknown exactly how these choices affect the narrative and main story itself. With Karen inside the bank, the gang members put on their masks and storm the bank, forcing the teller to open the vault at gunpoint. Time is going to be an important factor during the robberies and changes things accordingly. Inside the vault, we'll find five safes and a new choice to make. Attempt to crack the safes, wasting time, or blow them and make a lot of fuss. During the demo, the choice was made to place a stick of dynamite in the handle of each safe to blow them. 
With cash in our hands, the sheriff and deputies wait outside. A couple seconds later, Arthur is out using the dead eye to rapidly mark and hit four lawmen. With those targets down, he moves on the deputies on the roof of the buildings and with the law pushed back, Arthur and the gang moves from cover to cover, back to their horses, and out of Valentine. With the gang escaping, more officers arrive with Arthur and the gang beats a speeding locomotive which cuts off their pursuers. And with that, the mission ends and technically so does the journalist's demo. But there's more to this recap because we scrambled things a bit. Various events were shown before the small bank heist. In one, Arthur loots a nearby fisherman's tent while the man was completely focused on his fish. The fisherman's dog raises the alarm and Arthur and the man square off with Arthur pushing him to the ground after trying a simpler and less violent approach. You can go in houses and steal jewelry, jump on a moving train to rob people inside, rob a random guy walking down the street, and more. And the things you can do during the day may not be possible at other times or places. There are lots of dynamic events going on that depend on how the player acts before and during them. And the same logic also applies to the missions. As we said before, this is a single player story focused on the life of Arthur Morgan. But while controlling Morgan, we are actually controlling Dutch's entire gang and the nomadic gang's hideout, which serves as the player's home base, which will travel along the map according to the story. Exactly like every NPC and animal, even the people in the camp have roles and routines. Every gang member has a job within the community such as washing clothes, collecting wood, cooking, playing the guitar at night near the bonfire, and there are even prostitutes. Arthur, as chief enforcer of the gang, is more because his muscles provide the camp with food and supplies. Sometimes he even acts as mediator between brawling gang members. Other times he may raid trains to supply arms. If supplies are abundant, spirits in the camp will be high. If people are hungry, the mood will turn sour. Again, it's player's choice how to let Arthur interact with the community. He can hunt and explore alone and let other people of the community worry about food, or he can keep the camp well fed, hunting or buying supplies and get rewarded for it. Be aware, by the way, that if you don't want to take care of your people for a long time, the gang will still survive without your help, but Arthur might be treated differently upon his return. Nothing that will affect the overall narrative, but the lesson here is better to not be an asshole. The camp serves as a resource for many things. It's not only where relations between characters are built, but here we can plan train robberies, bank heists, or hunting trips. There will be activities and with the press of a button, you'll be able to talk with whomever you want. And every interaction can lead to new activities, jobs, and more importantly, missions. Hunting is something that we'll have to do if we want to keep our camp well fed and happy. And despite being already available in Red Dead Redemption, this time things go deeper. How you kill prey is now fundamental because if you also do it for money, butchers will pay you more if the meat is fresh and with the minimum amount of gunshots. So, if not extremely necessary, like if a bear is chasing you down on foot, try to always use a bow and arrow when hunting. But as we said, it's not just the weapon that's important, but the freshness of the meat. You can leave prey to rot under the sun and use the smell as bait to hunt predators, normally bigger animals with more meat for your people. With the carcass collected, you can either take it to the camp, remember that Arthur is a big man with no problems doing that, or tie it to your horse and take it with you. Just don't leave the corpse there for long or it will start to rot, and you may find yourself in trouble. Small kills instead, such as skinned squirrels and rabbits, will be preserved and kept in your satchel because, gameplay-wise, it becomes too annoying to have small kills constantly going bad. Realism in this game is important for Rockstar, but they don't want details to ruin the player experience. Another important thing to remember when transporting a big dead animal on your horse is that people may give you some problem, from those interested in a new trophy to others who haven't eaten for a while. The horses, or your horse, are another thing that has greatly changed in Red Dead Redemption 2. They now serve as many hubs for various activities. They are able to transport more weapons for you, to be collected and reserved for use when necessary, but there's a limit to what a horse can carry, just like you. 
You can still whistle for your horse, but he will react and come only if you're nearby. No more magic spawns despite having left your steed miles away. You can create a bond with your horse by calming it when it's agitated, feeding it and grooming it. The stronger your bond, the calmer he'll be and the faster he'll obey commands and the easier he'll do what you need, even in stressful situations. Your horse is no more just a means of transportation, it's truly a companion. During the story, you may be able to find faster horses or others able to carry more things, but always remember that untrained horses are unpredictable and different breeds have different personalities and reactions to situations and the environment. A well-trained horse trusts you in moving down a cliff and it's also smart enough to understand the difference between a possible jump and certain death. While new people will join the gang as the story progresses, no you can't just recruit new members at will in the game world, some of them are known faces for those who played Red Dead Redemption, starting with John Marston. With the game set in 1899, we know that Marston, at the time, is 26 years old, with his daughter still alive and little Jack only 4 years old. John has been with Dutch since he escaped from the orphanage with the gang leader who became a father figure, teaching him how to shoot, hunt, gather, read, and survive in the world. Bill Williamson is another familiar face, but he's not the bold outlaw we first met at Fort Mercer, but a whiny, impulsive, violent, and stupid man. Valuable as a gun when it comes to killing, but absolutely unreliable when planning heists and anything else. Together with Williamson, we also have Javier Escuela, who plays the guitar and provides the camp with lively entertainment when the group is in high spirits. Uncle is the third known figure, the oldest and most of the time the drunkest. He's usually on Arthur's bad side since he spends more time treating hangovers than being useful. The blonde woman is Sadie Adler while the blonde, unnamed member of the game is Micah Bell, one of Dutch's favorite killers. Dutch's old friend is Jose Matthews, not the oldest member of the posse, but probably the first. He met Dutch sometime in the 1870s when the two men tried to rob one another. The unnamed Native American is Charles Smith. And while on the subject, when Rockstar says there won't be fights or meetings with Native Americans in the game, they're clearly talking about tribes. Charles is always up for a fight and is one of the younger members of the gang, like Lenny, who we don't know much about. The same goes for Pearson, who is the camp cook. A little more is known about Sean McGuire, a young Irish fellow who told a story about how he once got into a brawl after trying to gun someone down but realizing he had no bullets. And that's pretty much it for this video. All links to the previews can be found in the description if you're interested in some reading. Before leaving, Rockstar Games has just announced that next month there will be more info released about Red Dead Redemption 2, together with details about the special editions. With that said, as always, for all the new updates, keep following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to chat with us, other players and fans, join us on our official Discord server. For GTA series videos, this was Gary7MT, and I'm out.